Good morning and welcome to Crossroads Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us for our online service. I hope that you are getting by your week okay. And it's certainly been a challenge for most people, I know, but uh, been praying for you. I know many of you have been praying for us as well. And I'm thankful that we have a resource like this where we can come together and worship the Lord and keep in touch. And so if you've got prayer requests, just drop them in the comment section. And I love going through that and praying for the needs of others. And uh, this morning, we've got a special treat for you. We've got some uh, special music planned for you. And then we've got some video clips from some church members that are checking in and just uh, sh giving a shout out to people. I know during a time like this, we don't get a chance to say hi to one another and shake hands and uh, visit with friends like we normally do at church. So this gives people an opportunity to at least be seen and for us to uh, see them. And Lord willing, this uh, virus uh, will, uh, things will start looking better in the weeks to come. And, but until then, we just keep trusting the Lord and praying and have patience. I want to tell you about our new church website. Uh, we've rebuilt it from the ground up. Many people last week were asking, how can we give? Some folks came by and dropped their offering off, uh, after, uh, the services last Sunday, and I appreciate that. Some mailed them in, but now we have online giving available. And if you go to our church website, which is crossroadsgainesville.com, you'll see a, a tab at the top of the screen that says give. Click that tab and it will bring up our online giving page. And so you can select the account that you want to give to. Uh, if it's a tithe, you can select that and the amount. If you wanna to give to something uh, extra, uh, like the building fund or mission fund, you can uh, click the tab uh, that gives you some additional options and you can fill out that online giving. It's a simple process. If you register, then you can just come back, sign in real simple every time. You can also uh, click the option for recurring giving if, uh, if you want to uh, have a, rec a recurring weekly or monthly uh, tithe, something like that. And so I hope that option is easy for you. If there's ever any trouble, uh, just let me know. You can always contact me through my email at pastor.crossroadsgainesville at gmail.com. And uh, if there's any trouble at all, it's been a good week in spite of all that's been going on. And we don't know what God is doing in our world right now. And, uh, but in spite of all of it, there have been some great spiritual victories that have been won. I've had people call me up throughout the week telling me about unsaved relatives of theirs that have gotten saved. People that I have prayed for personally who have been saved. And uh, I was talking to a friend here this week and uh, on the parking lot of Atwoods, and we were having a discussion about what God must be doing in the world. And I was telling him about some people who were trying to win their family members to Christ. And he looked at me and he said, preacher, he said, I've been raised Catholic my whole life. We've been coming to Crossroads Baptist Church. My daughters have been saved. My wife has been saved. I'm the only one in my house that's not saved. Well, you may recognize his face. But Brother New here on uh, the parking lot of Atwoods with his family sitting in the car and me and him standing in the parking lot, Brother Danny prayed and accepted Jesus Christ into his heart and now he's saved. And when we get a chance to meet together as a church family again, they'll be baptized together as a family. Now what an awesome moment that is gonna be. So anyway, get your Bible ready. Gather your family around your laptop computer or your television or however you've got this feed set up. Get your Bibles out and have church. And let's focus on God. Let's focus on the message. You're going to hear some special music in a moment. You're going to hear some testimonies from folks in our church. And I hope that it's all a blessing to you. Thanks for tuning in. Enjoy the service. We love and miss you guys. We miss all the kids on the bus and in junior church. We hope to see everybody soon. Ready? We, we love you. Miss you. Hi, everybody. Sure miss seeing you all. And can't wait till we're all back together again at church. Love y'all. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon. See y'all soon. Bye. Hey, everybody. This is Hollandsworth. We hope that everyone is doing well. 
and we can't wait to get back to church and see everyone. We love y'all and we miss y'all. Hey everybody, this is Chris and April Glass. We're coming to you from the hill. Uh, Brother Randy just wanted us to do some kind of little short video just to let everybody know that we miss y'all. We miss coming together as a church and as a family. We hope everyone is well. We've been enjoying Brother Randy's uh, podcast preaching or whatever you call them. I'm not up to date on all this video stuff. Uh, April here is uh, starting to cry. And uh, just let you know, we have really been suffering a lot. Uh, I normally get a store-bought haircut, you know, about twice a month. And April, the butcher over here, <laughs> she got a hold of me the other day and skinned her own back. So uh, it's probably going to take me a few weeks to recoup from this, but uh, at least we're saving, uh, I saved my $10. But um, I'm sure old Jay Beck would not be real happy about that. But we'll be happy when church uh, finally kicks back off. And let's see if April can say anything without bawling. I don't think so. So anyway, um, I miss everybody. I miss my Sunday school class. And I just miss being able to go to church. It's something that we take for granted. So anyway, I can't wait to see everybody. And I can't wait till this is all over with. So I love you all. My Sunday school kids, if you're watching, I love you. Um, and I hope to see you soon. All right. Bye. Find your place in your Bibles this morning in Genesis chapter 8. 
Genesis chapter 8. And God sure is good to us. If God is worth serving when things are going good, he's worth serving when things are difficult. And we are living in difficult times right now. And this week I've had many phone calls from people that have lost their jobs and there's a lot of fear and uncertainty. But this is a verse that God has just had on my mind all throughout the week. And I've known since last Sunday that this would be the message that God would want me to bring this morning. Genesis chapter 8 and verse number 1, it starts off with these four words. And God remembered Noah. And the Bible says, and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark, and God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. And the fountains also of the deep and the windows of heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained and the waters returned from off the earth continually. And after the end of the 150 days, the waters were abated. Let's pray and we'll get into some thoughts that I hope will be a blessing to you. Heavenly Father, thank you for our church. And even though we are not able to meet together as a congregation this morning, Lord, we are still together in our hearts and in our spirits. And Lord, I pray that you'd help us to continue on faithfully and serve you during this difficult time. Bless this message, I pray in power. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to draw your attention to probably the greatest catastrophe the world has ever known. And it's the story of the flood in Noah's Ark and how God provided safety for his family as the whole world was being judged. Now we're familiar with the story and sometimes a familiar story like this, we don't appreciate it. And we overlook some of the most important truths. And that's some of what I want to draw out this morning. For 120 years, Noah had preached that God was going to judge the earth. And the world was exceeding wicked. It was a very violent place. And just like we have a virus attacking our planet right now, there was a virus attacking the whole world then. But it wasn't a medical virus. It was a virus of sin. And mankind was on the path to destroy itself. And God says, I'm going to judge this world. And he tells Noah to, to prepare an ark and that God would send all those animals two by two into the ark. A representative from every kind of animal species. Now, I know I've heard a lot of people say, uh, this story can't possibly be true because how could all of these thousands and thousands of different animals all over the world, how could they all fit in that one boat? Well, the Bible doesn't say God brought every type of animal into that ark. It said it brought from every kind two representatives of the dog kind, two representatives of you might call the cat kind, two representatives to come on that ark and prepare for this great flood that was about to take place. The Bible says when all the animals and Noah's family had safely boarded, there was one great door on the side of that boat and God shut the door. No one could enter. No one could open up that door. God had shut it. And by the way, let me encourage you as a mom or a dad or a brother or sister that right now is the best time to be getting your family on board. I'm not talking about the ark. I'm talking about uh, on board with salvation, eternal life. Uh, the door of salvation was hung at Calvary. It's been hinging on the cross for 2,000 years. But there will come a time when that door will shut and no one will ever be able to open it again. And we want to make sure that you're saved and your family members are saved and that they're prepared for home in heaven with Jesus Christ someday. They get on that ark. The door is shut. And the Bible says that God breaks open the foundations of the deep. He pierces the firmament and the waters begin to fall and it begins to rain. And Noah and his family endure this intense rain for 40 days and 40 nights. 
The flood waters spread across the entire earth, covering the mountains, the Bible says, to a depth of 20 feet above the tallest mountain peak. All living creatures on dry land were wiped out. And this flood covered the earth, according to scripture, for 150 days. Now, I want you to just think about this for a minute this morning, friend. For 150 days, Noah and his family have been adrift in a boat on the water. Can you even imagine what that must have been like on those turbulent waters? 150 days. But that's not the end of it. On the 150th day, the ark finally touches something. It rested on the mountains of Ararat, which is in uh, eastern Turkey near the border of Russia. 150 days. And on that day, the Bible says God, as if though he had grabbed a great valve, God turns off the foundations of the deep. And the rain from above ceases. And finally, the waters begin to recede. At approximately 224 days of living on that ark with all those animals, with your sons and their wives and, and, and the smell and all of the things that they went through, after 224 days, the Bible says the tops of the mountains begin to become visible as the waters continue to subside. Forty days later, Noah sends out a raven. The raven doesn't return. Seven days later, he sends out a dove. And the dove can't find anywhere to rest, and so it comes back to the boat. Seven days later, he sends out the dove again. This time, it comes back with an olive leaf in its mouth. Seven days later, he sends out the dove again, and this time, the dove doesn't return and Noah realizes that there's hope. Land is appearing. Things are beginning to grow. There's hope. But his family's still on the ark. And they're still waiting and waiting and waiting. When can we go back outside? When can we step foot on dry land? Now, some of you are experiencing this right now. And we wonder, when will life get back to normal again? When will we be able to eat some Mexican food again? When are we going to be able to go out and do something with our families and go to Six Flags or go here or go there or not have to worry about the, the quarantine and the, the isolation? Well, just put this in perspective, this story. It's been about 314 days now since Noah and his family have stepped on that boat and since God had shut the door and now Noah is finally able to take the cover off of the ark and see that the surface of the earth was drying up. But he's still waiting on permission from God to leave the ark. And finally, 56 days later, about a hundred, excuse me, 370 days since the flood had began, Noah told his family that it was safe for them to come out of the ark. Now, folks, a year is a long time to be cramped up with all of those animals. Not only that, think about those sons and their daughter-in-laws. They had to be cramped up with their mother-in-law for over a year and nowhere to go. And folks, this is no luxury cruise. Uh, there was no swimming pool. There was no buffet line. There was no entertainment. Here they are just floating aimlessly on the surface of the ocean. Now, the Bible does not tell us anything about Noah's personal emotions during this experience. And I think that that's really interesting. But we do know that he was a man of faith and he trusted God and always took God at his word. 
And by the way, that's why he built the ark in the first place. But let's face it, he was human too. He was a man just like you and I are men. And the sea is a lonely place. It could have been very easy. I mean, it, to, to get discouraged and wonder. Do, do, you think, do you think that Noah ever wondered if God had forgotten him? The Bible doesn't say. But if he had, I think we can sympathize with that. If Noah did wonder that, surely it would have put him in the same camp as a lot of other great Christians who had doubted. I mean, he had followed the Lord to the T up until this point. He had preached to an unbelieving world. He had built this enormous ark. He had led the animals safely two by two into the ark. He had got his family on board. But now he must be wondering, when is this going to end? When are we going to get out of here again? When is life going to go back to normal? Now, I want to ask you this question this morning. Have you ever felt abandoned by God? Abandoned. I mean, have you ever wondered if God's forgotten about you? Have you ever felt like when you knelt to pray that your prayers weren't going any higher than the ceiling? They're just bouncing down and falling back on your head. Well, that's what I love about Genesis chapter 8. Listen to it again in verse number one. The Bible says, and God remembered Noah. I think probably one of the greatest human fears is to be forgotten. Nobody wants to be forgotten. Some of you that are, uh, that are widows, your children are grown and they live in other places. You have a fear of being forgotten by your children. You just look forward to a phone call. Some of you remember what it was like when you were a little child and you lost track of where mom went in the store and there was that fear that maybe you had been forgotten. Nobody wants to be forgotten. Now, when the Bible says the Lord remembered Noah, listen carefully. When it says the Lord remembered Noah, it does not mean that God had forgotten about Noah. No way. It simply means that in the midst of that great flood, that God had stayed true to his promise. Now, I want to remind you, even though things are difficult right now, don't you let the devil lie to you and tell you that God's forgotten you. Just because things look scary, just because things are difficult, don't let him lie to you because he's good at that. He'll crawl up on your shoulder and he'll say, well, if God loved you, why did he let you get sick? If God loved you, why did he let your child go astray? If God loved you, why are things happening in my life the way that they are today? I'm telling you, God does love you. And he promised Noah and his family and those animals that during the flood, in the midst of all that death and destruction, that God would look down on this earth and remember to have mercy on those eight people on that big boat. And he remembered those animals. Now, I don't know if Noah felt forgotten by God, but if he did, he certainly was in good company with some other great saints. The psalmist said in Psalm 42, I will say unto God, my rock, why hast thou forgotten me? Why go I mourning because the oppression of the enemy? As with a sword in my bones, my enemies reproach me while they say daily unto me, where is thy God? Hmm. When Jesus was hanging on the cross and facing his darkest moments in agony and pain, the Bible said that he had to become sin for you and me. All the sins that I have committed, Jesus had to become all of that awful filth. And as he died on the cross, God the Father could not even look upon him as a sinner and had to turn his back on his son. And from the cross, Jesus cried out and said, my God, my God, why? Hast thou forsaken me? 
Bible says God remembered Noah. God remembered Noah. Let me give you some thoughts this morning. You can write them down. The first thought is this. Number one, God remembered Noah. You said, well, Randy, I, just exactly how? How did God remember Noah? In what way did God remember Noah? Well, here's a few things to think about. The first way God remembered Noah is in verse number one. The Bible said that God sent a wind. Do you see that there in your Bible? God sent a wind and it blew across the earth and it caused the floodwaters to begin to, uh, to, to recede. Now, I just want to remind you this morning, friend, that God still has supreme authority over the forces of nature. He commanded the wind and the wind blew. He said to the waters, settle down, and they settled down. And at God's command, the water level began to decrease all over the globe. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 30 that God holds the wind in his hands and he wraps the waters in his garment. He says in Job 38 that he puts a limit to the waves. He tells them, you can only go so far, but no further than I tell you. He says in Psalm 135 that he brings the wind out of the storehouse of heaven. Every drop of water, every gust of wind, every tiny snowflake comes from the hands of God. Even the hurricanes and the tornadoes serve his purpose. The storms that batter this earth are under his divine control. And just as God has the key to open, God has the key to shut. And he turned off the faucet and the heavens dried up. And the waters began to evaporate from the surface of the earth. And so here's what we need to remember, friend. In our time of testing, that's when God's purposes are being served. And when God's purposes are served, the hard times will go away. Now, folks, I don't know what God is doing in our world. I don't know. I don't know what his plan is with all of this. Whatever is happening, he has allowed it to happen because he's supreme. He's sovereign. He's the almighty God. Uh, maybe, just maybe, God's going to use this to bring a revival to our nation or to our world. I know this. I know there are bound to be billions of people all over the globe who for the first time in a long time are thinking a little bit more seriously about eternity. There are a lot of people right now that are turning to God. And I've seen it this week. People getting saved. And who probably would have never gotten saved without an experience like this. I'm just telling you, when God's purpose is served, that's when the storm will go away. And by the way, let me just say, it's, it, I think it's significant here in the story to remember that the flood did not just disappear in a day. No, the waters rose gradually, and they fell gradually. And that's how God works. And that's how God deals with you and me. Many times his deliverance is gradual. It's little by little. It's day by day. It's step by step. And you don't get yourself into a world of trouble overnight. And we certainly don't get ourselves out of trouble overnight. And we may be in for a difficult time over the next few weeks and months. And who knows how long the consequences of what has happened. Who knows how long they're going to last. But I know this. God's in control. And whenever he's through teaching us what needs to be taught, that's when the storm will end. The second thing that he did for Noah, the second way he remembered him, is the Bible said he gave him a sign. So here's Noah, he's on this boat. I'm sure he's so tired of being around all of those animals day and night. I mean, just imagine the smell, just imagine the sounds all the time on that ark. No doubt Noah was ready to have a little bit of elbow room. I mean, sometimes the hardest people to live with the own family. And he's got sons, he's got daughter-in-laws, he, he's got a wife that he can't get away from. She just keeps continuing to boss him around. And this goes on for a year. I'm sure he was ready to get off that boat. So here's what he does. First, he sends out a raven. 
And the raven's a carnivore. The raven gets out there. There's dead bodies floating all over the place. It finds plenty of things to eat, plenty of places to land. It doesn't come back. He sends out a raven, or excuse me, a dove. The dove comes back because it couldn't find any safe place. So it came back to him the first time. Seven days later, he sends him out again. He finds an olive branch and he brings it back to Noah. And Noah finally has some hope that yes, this may, there, there is an end in sight. Seven days later, he sends out the dove. The dove doesn't return. He realizes things are getting better. Things are getting better. Praise the Lord. There's hope we may get off of this boat. But here's the question. Why did Noah send the birds out in the first place? You ever thought about that? I think the answer to that is simple. Noah was human, man. Noah was human. And here's what we don't realize about the story. God told Noah when the flood would start. But he never told him when it would end. Noah had no idea when it would end. Now here's what I've learned about going through hard times. Most of the time we can endure almost anything if we only know when it will end, right? I mean, if we just know there's some hope, if we just know. And that's what's so difficult about the time that we're living in right now with this coronavirus. Nobody knows. Everybody's trying to throw out some hope and everybody's trying to get an idea of how long this may last and people are talking about Easter, but we don't know. And that's the crazy thing about it. We don't know. So oftentimes it's the not knowing that wears us down, that stresses us out. And we watch and we wait and we wonder and the uncertainty gnaws us from the inside. And all along, the big question is, when will this end? You want to know the answer to that question? Here's the answer. In God's time. Not a day sooner. Not a day later. Nothing can rush. Nothing can change or hinder God's design and his plan for his people. God can make the dry ground appear any time he chooses. And we may feel forgotten. We may feel abandoned in the flood. But the dry land will appear in due time. So Brother Randy, well, what, what are some signs I should be looking for? You know, Noah was looking for some signs. What should I be looking for? Well, you know what? It may be something as simple as a scripture that comes back to your memory or that you find while you're reading your Bible. It may be something like a song that comes on at the right moment. It might be a phone call or a letter that you get in the mail just at the moment you felt like giving up and you realize that was from God. That was God doing that. I remember being in the hospital with a fellow one time. His name was Joe. Joe had been in and out of the hospital uh, for years of his life. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with him. His body was wasting away and he was down to, I mean, to hardly nothing, a bag of bones. And we stayed together in the hospital room one night and, and uh, we talked until the wee hours of the morning. We spent a long time just going through the Bible, praying together. I was trying to encourage him. And we were roommates for about a week probably. But one particular night, it was probably two in the morning. And as we were talking about the Bible, old Joe, man, he just began to weep. Just began to weep. And this is what he told me. He said, Randy, he said, this is the lowest moment of my life. All I've thought about in recent days is ending my life in suicide. I don't feel like I have any hope. And he says, and wouldn't you know it, that at the lowest moment of my life, that God would send a preacher to be my roommate and encourage me. Now, friend, let me tell you something. God will send hope to your life. He'll send signs if you're listening and if you're looking. And some of you, God's been trying to get you saved. Some of you, God's been trying to get you right with the Lord. He's been trying to get you back in church. He's been trying to get you back in the will of God again. And now he's finally got your attention. Now that you can't walk into the doors of a church building, now you appreciate it. God knows what we need. God knows what he's doing. How did God remember Noah? Let me say that God remembered Noah 
by speaking to him again. In verse number 16 and 17 here of our chapter in Genesis 8, the Bible says that God tells Noah and his family to get off the ark with the animals. Now, as far as I can tell, this was the first time that God had spoken to Noah since they had entered the ark. I don't, I don't see where God had spoken to him. We're talking about a year of silence from heaven. A year. Man, what a long year that must have been inside that dark boat adrift on the water. But you know what? The same thing can happen to us. You may feel like there's times in your life when you're forgotten and alone. You may think that the heavens have become brass and that your prayers are just bouncing back on you. What do you do then? Well, you got to do what Noah did. Stay faithful to what you know to be true. Obey the Lord and follow the light that you were given in the past. Day after day, Noah would get up and he would take care of his responsibilities on the ark. And he did it even though, he, whether he felt it like it or not, whether it felt good or not, he just got up every day and did his job. God gave him a task and it had to be done. His feelings were irrelevant. He knew that God had led him this far and he believed that God would lead him straight through to the end. He waited for the Lord to speak. And he did the only thing that he knew to do, and that was to stay faithful. You've probably heard the old quote. I don't know what preacher said it, but it's really good. Don't doubt in the darkness what God has shown you in the light. That's good advice. Wait on the Lord, and while you wait, Obey as much as you know. Obey what you've been taught. And when the time comes, God will speak again. And you can't rush God. And, 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 and But you can rest assured that you'll hear his voice again. But until that day comes, stay faithful. Do your duty. There's no reason to lay in bed depressed and, 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 and sad and moping. Get up and serve God. And worship the Lord. So first of all, God remember Noah. Here's the second thing and we're almost through. Let me say secondly, Noah remembered God. I love this part of the story. I'm glad that God remembered Noah. But we also see that Noah remembered God. I want you to write this down and remember it. Those that remember God will always be remembered by God. No matter how difficult their circumstances. Well, how do we know? What, what, what did Noah do to prove that he remembered God? Well, think about this. The first thing is this. The Bible says that he left the ark. Now look down at verse number 18. And Noah went forth and his sons and his wives and his sons' wives with him. Every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, whatsoever creepeth upon the earth after their kinds, went forth out of the ark. Now listen, I, I don't think we can even appreciate how much courage it must have taken for Noah to leave that ark. The world was a different place now from the one he had known before. And even though that ark may have been crowded and cramped and stinky, it was home. And it was safe. And now they were leaving the known for the unknown. They were walking into a world that is, the, the world they knew before is gone forever. I mean, cities gone, roads gone, homes gone, people gone, geography changed. Everything was different. Everything was new. Imagine the courage to step out of that ark into a brand new world and leave the security and the safety behind. I mean, he had to trust God for a totally new future. Can I tell you that sometimes and oftentimes as a Christian, God calls on us to do things that are hard and that even seem impossible to do. Times when we're called, like Abraham was, to leave the known for the unknown. When we had to make the step to decide to leave West Virginia and move to Texas, that was a scary time in my life. Scary time. 
I didn't know what God was doing and what God would do for me and my family. And sometimes we've got to leave the ark of safety that has taken us this far and step out on our own and trust God. Now, here's what I like about this story. Now, look at those verses again. There in verse number 18, I want you to notice that Noah and his family came out first. You see that? Now listen, that couldn't have been easier, easy, easy either. <laughs> I, I think if I was Noah, I would have had one of the lions or the tigers go out first. Yeah, let one of those brave ones go out there. I think I'd have slept a, slapped an elephant on the hiney and said, hey, you go out there and take a look around. But that's not what, what happened. The Bible said that Noah led the way. He and his family, they stepped out for great courage. And that's what faith is. Faith is taking the next step. What's the next step for you? Maybe it's tithing. Maybe it's getting baptized. Maybe it's getting saved. Maybe it's joining the church. Maybe it's deciding that you're going to uh, serve the Lord and, and give him your life. What's the next step of faith for you? How do we know that Noah remembered God? Second is this. The Bible says in verse number 20 that he built an altar. You see that? He built an altar, an altar and offered burnt offerings to the Lord. First thing he does, he steps off that ark. You think he would have ran around and said, Woo, man, it feels so good to be free. Let's get busy building a house. Let's get busy building this new world. But that's not what he does. The first thing he does, he gets off that altar, or off that ark, he builds an altar, and he says, God, thank you for your goodness to me and to my family. God had led him every step of the way. It was God, God, who had warned him about the judgment to come. God told him to build the ark. God designed the ark. God put the animals in the ark two by two. God shut the door. God preserved the ark through the, through the flood and the catastrophe. God brought the ark to a safe place. God told Noah when to get off safely off of the boat. God did it all. And the same applies to salvation. The Old Testament picture of the ark is a beautiful picture of salvation by grace through faith. And we remember, just like Noah did, Noah realized, listen, by all rights, I should have perished in the flood with the rest, but God showed mercy to me. And that's what the ark is for you and me. The ark is the message of the gospel. There's going to come a day when Jesus Christ is going to come back and this whole world is going to be judged not by a flood of water, but it's going to be judged in a flame of fire. And listen, the only hope that you and I have for our eternity is by knowing that we're safe by the grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is my ark of safety. He built an ark. He was thankful. And man, what a challenge for all of us. And even in a time like this, to remember God in all that we do. Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, remember God in the days of thy youth. Can I encourage you, young person that's listening this morning? Remember God in your high school days? Remember God in your college days? In your marriage, remember God? In your days of being single, remember God. In your victories and in your defeats, remember God. In sickness and in health, remember God. In your old age, remember God. In your dying moments, remember God. Right now is a time for Christians to remember God. That should be our motto. That should be what we wake up and live for every day, we should say, I will remember the Lord and take time to give thanks. Build you an altar where you meet with God every day and take time to pray and speak up for Jesus and tell other people about the Lord. I was talking to Brother Chris Glass last night and he was telling me of some of the experiences that him and Kevin King have had trying to witness to, to, to different friends and tell them how to be saved. And that's what Christianity is all about. Speak up for the Lord. Give him glory and tell other people about him. Bless the name of the Lord. Instead of complaining in front of your kids, remind your children how good God's been to you 
and show them just how much God has blessed you in your life. Let them see your faith. Remember God who remembers you. So here's the message. Number one, God remembered Noah. And God will remember you and he remembers me. But number two, Noah, remember God. Now, friend, I don't know who you are, what your background is, what your life story is, but I know this, God loves you right where you are. Some of you haven't been out of the house in a while. We've got ladies from our church watching, no doubt, this morning who, because of health conditions, they're, they're, they're fearful and they're afraid even to get out and to go shopping or to have any company over. Let me tell you, you might feel lonely right now, but God remembers you. God knows where you're at. There'll come a day when we get to step out of those houses without any fear, without any worry. But let me ask you this morning, friend, do you know for sure that you're saved? Do you know for sure that Jesus Christ lives in your heart? If not, I want you to stop what you're doing this morning. I want you to get down on your knees and I want you to pray sincerely. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. Please forgive me of my sin. Come into my heart and take me to heaven when I die. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, friend, if you prayed that prayer, or if you want somebody to take some time with you and explain the gospel to you and answer some questions, you write to me. Pastor at crossroadsgainesville at gmail.com. You write to me. I'll take the time to explain the gospel to you. What's the next step for you in your walk with God? What's the next step of obedience? Heavenly Father, thank you for our church. Thank you for faithful people. Lord, I pray that the message today has been a help and a blessing to them. Guide us safely through this week. Be with our nation's leaders. Help us, we pray, to keep our eyes on you. Help us to be faithful to you. We know that you're faithful to us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, church. I love you. Service tonight starts at 6 p.m. Hope you'll have your Bibles ready. We'll take a little bit more time and study God's word tonight. Don't forget, you can give online, crossroadsgainesville.com. God bless you. Have a good day.